So someone made the comment that we're gonna linear people and then concede the ley line. One of the things this deck is doing that I think is interesting is that so normal dredge doesn't play burning inquiry. This has been the person who submitted this has has submitted it as turbo dredge. And it's turbo in the fact that it's playing street rates and simian spirit guides to potentially generate some more busted starts. And then post board, because it's playing burning inquiry. And, you know, the normal cathartic union faith looting street rates, it's pivoting into hollowed one with flame blade adept to kind of sidestep graveyard hate. This is an interesting strategy. Um, we see vintage dredge actually do this. Vintage dredge has been playing hollowed one, sometimes in the main deck, I believe, even to just instead of trying to draw your cards to interact with their graveyard hate to guesstimate what kind of graveyard hate they're going to have, we just pivot into having a plan that doesn't necessarily care about them having their graveyard hate. This, this command's gonna get some mileage today. For those just joining us and wondering why we're waiting here, Moto just reset all of its leagues and need 32 players in a league for some stupid reason to begin playing matches. So, including myself, there are 23 players in this friendly modern league, so we need nine more people to join before I can find a match. We are still at four. You lost me and you gained one other. Fire up Moto to, you don't even have to, so this is, this is why it's extra stupid. If you have a Magic Online account and you play Modern and you know you're going to play Modern later and want to help me play matches sooner, you don't even have to be queuing for matches. You just need to join the league with eight tickets and a deck. You don't even, you don't even have to actually have a playable Modern deck because you could drop the league later and get your entry fee back if you haven't played any matches. So if you have a Magic Online account with eight tickets or 80 play points and it's just 60 cards, Come join this league for me to get this count up to 32 players. That way I can start playing with the other people who are still here who are actually want to play. Which is, again, just one of the myriad of reasons why having this minimum 32 player count to begin begin finding finding matches is uh is stupid. You will get you'll get the full entry fee back if you drop without playing any matches, but just being in it will contribute to this active player number, which needs to be 32 so I can play. Thanks, folks. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, I switched because of the queue issue. The modern queue had like 20 players almost instantly, and the legacy queue was sitting there at four. So it's probably going to take an hour for legacy to get enough people to actually play games with. And this is probably going to be ready to play games the next few minutes.
Y'all are great. Thank you. What are, what are, speaking of the event and me streaming motor today, what are, what are, what are, what are the, what are the, what's the over under for peak viewer counts a gay? I wonder, I wonder if I'll break, I wonder if we'll break 500. I'm not sure what classifies the difference to assist. There's links to the deck in the cube. I'm pretty sure we mulligan this. It doesn't have a faithless looting, a burning quarry, or a... Or what's it called? Yeah, yeah, if you drop, if you drop, you get your tickets back automatically. This hand is much better. I am on the play. We're gonna top this as a show of strength because we're fetching anyways. All right, so. Because I don't have a second land tier, um, I'm actually going to Faithless Looting. I could have Spirit Guide pitched Looting to Cathartic Reunion, but I need to draw a second land to begin casting Loam, so it doesn't really make sense to do that proactively. Ten months, ten long hard months where we watched Toglandia burn, Jeff started playing Sitter, and MTG actually got some quality of life improvements. What will 2019 bring? What's going on, Moan? Thanks for the 10 months. Welcome back. I appreciate it. I don't actually know the answer to that question, Parole. I don't... I wonder if it'll, like, stop letting people queue matches if people leave and the league falls back under 32 players. That's... I'm not... I'm actually not sure. I think I need to do this now and hope to hit another dredger sweep. And the reason why I think I need to do that right away is because my opponent's playing a blue deck and they're tapped out right now. So like if I wait a turn to cathartic reunion to potentially get more dredgers in my bin, I'm likely to um what's the word I'm likely to get counterspelled, which would be bad for us. Oh, I could have looted off spirit off spirit guide. That's interesting. Maybe I'm supposed to do that. Oh, you know what? I think my sequencing here. No, this is this is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and loam back. Copper line, wooded foothills, basic mountain. Then I'm going to go ahead and burning inquiry, I think. Now I'm going to faithful. Let's let faithless looting and guaranteed get two dredgers back into the bin. Because this, this is probably going to miss on a second dredger. It did not miss. God bless. All right. Ditch stinky. Ditch loam. Meta magic missile. This means I'm subbed for twice as many months as my last Bezo bucks, and that will never happen again. What's going on, meta missile? I appreciate that. Welcome back. Hey, Sarah, what's the $10 tip? Some democracy to add Mardu Angels to the queue. Sounds great. Thank you for that. We'll be diving into We'll be diving into a uh, new standard tomorrow on stream. Woodfall Primus, cute. So some kind of footsteps to the Gorio. So I have I have Con Flag in the bin. I probably want to kill the Jace, right? And I want to hold off on playing a land because I want to bring Blood Gas back. So I'm doing two there. 
Yeah, and I'm doing. Oh, look, they fixed it, so it doesn't it doesn't cover the thing anymore. That's good. Two. I'm gonna do four total because I wanna I wanna have an untapped land here or a land. So I'm gonna discard these cards. Then I'll get to Burning Inquiry here, Dredge, Three Stinkweed Imps. I wonder, I wonder if I could have, I wonder if I could have dealt Lethal this turn. I could have done five to them, which would have done, I could have potentially dealt Lethal this turn. Maybe I could have been more aggressive. Am I about to get like Spell Pierce or Suburb Denial here? And I don't really care if the Gorge Enters tapped. Hey, Fatal Pushing my Blood Gas, the timing on this is really bad. This is definitely sloppy timing for them. They should wait until I've played my land for the turn, most likely. Well, I guess if I would have done one more damage to them, the Blood Gas would enter with Haste, which is a big deal. Oh, I'm not guaranteed to keep my Copper Line Gorge. Okay, so that's loose on my part. That's that's loose on my part. All right, this, this is fine, though, I guess, because my Blood Gas are going to come back with Haste next turn. I'm going to, like, Dredge Loam. I guess they can have a Counterspell. Oh, geez, they're going to double stone rain me. Oh, gosh. So the fact that I, I'm about to get double stone rained. Whoopsie. Huh. Well, that's awkward. I haven't hit my... Okay, so I've messed this up. Yeah, I could have I could have played around this. I need to hit my... So there's the last one of those. Wow, there's I haven't hit the Oh, there is a there is a deck more salvage. Wait, did I have did I have deck more salvage in my bin already? Did I miss it? It's fine. It's fine. We're gonna kill them next turn. There's six cards in my deck. I'm gonna drag de dredge deck more salvage and then play it and then put up attack with a bunch of hasty blood gas. I think, I think the salvage is already in there and I missed it. I should probably pop this out because it's a little bit little. It's a little bit little. Yeah, it must it must have already been in there. I'm pretty sure it puts these in, it lists these in the order that they come in. You know, I should have what I should have done is I should have played I should have kept the fetch when I when I conflagrated. And the reason for that is keeping the fetch would allow me to fetch after I dredge a bunch to then get blood gas back. All right, sweet. So I'm pretty sure we just like always turn into hollowed one. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the game plan is just like always turn into a hollowed one deck. What do I, what do I want to trim though? How do we feel about this? Just like trim, trim these, uh, these eight and board in these eight. Is this, is this a ley line of the void matchup? I guess this could be a ley line of the void matchup too. Are we secretly a meme? I don't know if there's anything secret about it. That's true. If we're leaning less on the graveyard, cutting conflagrate probably makes sense. Cutting a... And I guess when I'm cutting conflagrate, cutting life from the loan makes a whole lot of sense as well. This seems fine. I'm expecting them to have graveyard hate two here. So like the plan is just like stink weed and flame blade add up to all of one them post board. Some blood gas. I guess like from the loam helps me recur my blood gas again and again, but like with Stinkweed Imp and stuff, I should be able to find find one of my two copies of Loam. And like Stinkweed Imp like trades with their big things in combat. So it's probably fine. So yeah, I think I think I want I think I want the ley lines. And I think we just like almost always pivot to against anybody that could have ley line or rip, we just pivot to the the hollowed boy plan. Uh, this thing just doesn't do anything, right? It's like no explosion, no ley line. 
That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a ley line opener or something that's explosive. And this hand is like a pretty good mix of both, honestly, right? I get to like put ley line into play. And I have uh, turn, turn one flame blade adept. Sure. They took my cathartic reunion. Interesting. Yeah, I agree. This is a really neat build of dredge. I don't, I don't know if it's good, but it's definitely interesting. And collective brutality, druid. Well. I don't think I want to cycle this. Is there a reason? Why Why do I want to dredge the stinkweed, chat? Why we are con confirmed being out-memed. People who are asking me to tell them why they're stupid, instead tell me why you're smart. Don't don't make me tell you you're dumb and that your play is wrong. Tell instead tell me why your play is good. Say Jeff, we should play Stinkweed Imp, and this is why. I mean, like I'm not really a dredge deck right now, though, right? Like there's there's blood gas in my deck, but like I I've, I've gotten rid of I don't have creeping chill in my deck right now, and I don't have conflagrate. I have a minimum number and I don't have any amalgams. So we're not we're not really we're not really a dredge deck at the moment. Nothing, nothing but professionalism here, chat. Nothing, nothing but professionalism. Even, even been to life from alone there. Sign me up. Okay. No, playing playing KCI is really miserable in Magic Online. Probably do it for a hundred bucks for things things like Devoted Druid and KCI. In addition to like not generating what I would consider good games of Magic, they also just like are extra bad on Magic Online because of all the clicking. So they're they're bad for multiple reasons. Trim one of everything. That doesn't sound right. There's definitely cards in my deck that are worse than others. It could be just that my opponent's not playing. It could be that my opponent is just like not playing copies of Leyline and they're in their deck, which means that I kind of don't mind just like being a dredge deck game too. Just like be dredge with Leylines. A one hundred dollars, Mikey. I would I would prefer to work through my modern cube. Alright, so I mean like this doesn't even really accomplish anything. It's like I have I have another oh I don't have another green source. Holy crap, there's only one oh the, the other stomping ground is dredged. What a tilt. I decided to like have to draw a green source naturally. I think we're I think we're done here. I think I've seen enough of their deck and not seen ley lines that I'm going to uh I'm gonna go back off of this plan. Maybe I just like keep just hollowed one.
Can I fit just hollowed one in? Our opponent appears to be playing an Esper deck. I don't I don't know what we're doing. You can find deck lists from my upcoming standard decks we'll be playing starting tomorrow in the deck queue. I also highlighted five of my favorite things from the deck queue in my article on cool stuff Inc. this week. That published this morning. Yeah, seems pretty good. It's, uh, it's got a ley line and it's got a turn two cathartic reunion for uh, ditch two dredgers. The goal of this deck is to be a more all-in dredge deck that then pivots into a hollowed one-esque plan post sideboard. Oh, damn it. That's so frustrating. I just like had... I had, I had the, we, we I, I changed back because we didn't see, we didn't see cards like these in the first game. I guess, I guess I can just like Cathartic Reunion pass these things is the, is the plan at this point. Find Street Wraith Hollowed one here. Put a 4 4 into play. Nope. All right. One, two flyers for three. Let's go. Yeah, I probably should have just assumed that they had Leyline. Leyline's pretty stock in decks that can loot and just stayed on the Flame Blade Adept plan. We definitely would have had a Flame Blade Adept by now. I trimmed a Hollowed one as well. All right. Hollowed one's a good drop. Means uh, once I find a. Faithless Looting or Burning Choir or something like that. You get going. These cards are so beautiful. It's also worth noting that the Detention Sphere that they used last game to get rid of our Ley Line of the Void will get rid of their Ley Lines as well. So like if they if they do that, they're gonna be they're gonna be sad. Alright, one one Faithless Looting, please. I'm also gonna hold I'm gonna hold this mountain because if I draw a Cathartic Reunion, I'd like to Cathartic Reunion ditch Mountain Life from the Loom. Alright. Uh, Alright, we might just might just be casting a five mana four four next turn. I guess I should have played the fetch line to fetch a fetch a shock land this turn, so I'm gonna have to fetch shock. Alright, they've cast bad Merfolk Looter. If this hollowed one doesn't get pathed here, we're gonna be in a pretty good spot. Yeah, I definitely so I am I am two hit points lower than I should be. If I'd have played better. Yeah, we're gonna definitely cast Exhibit Spirit Guide too. We're just on like the mono, mono backup plans. Like our, our backup plan seems to be better than their backup plan. Seems to be the seems to be the current status of this game. The backup backup plans mere match. And their hand doesn't really seem to be going anywhere, so I don't really think there's a reason for me to cast Burning Inquiry. Alright, they had a Path to Exile. It's pretty good for them. I don't have another basic in my deck. Alright, so they're down to six. Chalky Chalks in the promised money from the calendar reminder. Thanks for the two months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. I mean, I'm really, I'm really beating myself up for pivoting off the board plan here. I think if I had all those, all those other good cards, we'd be in, be in a reasonable spot. Creeping chill would be lethal. You're not wrong. All right. So if I attack with everything. They can fire up Colonnade and trade with Hollowed One or eat Simeon Spirit Guide. No, they can't eat Simeon Spirit Guide. They can just trade with Hollowed One, right? Get if they try and trade with Spirit Guide or eat Spirit Guide, they'll take five. If they have a Path to Exile here, we're probably dead. All 
All right, so like what else? What else is in my deck right now? Do I want to cast this Burning Inquiry? I don't think I do. I guess I have one more Hollowed one in my deck. I'm going to pass for now. Maybe I'm not supposed to fetch there. Fetching there is nice because it means if I find a blood gas next turn, I can cast it and it'll have haste. And it's a lethal threat that's attacking next turn. The upside to waiting a turn is if I cast the Burning Inquiry right now, I only get to keep... Um, I only get to keep one card, whereas if I draw a card next turn and it's a bad card, I then get to... I then get to keep two cards. The stream title is correct. It's wrong on your side. If you think the stream title might be wrong, refresh and it'll, it'll let you know for sure. So it's just mills them three now. Uh, there aren't prized amalgams in my deck. I've sideboarded them out. Oh, no, I put them back in, didn't I? I'm dumb. Yeah, I guess... I, it's, so it's like six in one hand, half dozen in the other. Um, putting the... This lets me cast Street Wraith and Blood Gas. The, the Steam Vents lets me cast Prized Amalgam. Discarded both my spells there. We're going to hold these lands in my hand because I have both Faithless Looting, Cathartic Reunion, and more Burning Inquiries in my deck. They've been to settle the wreckage. It's a good one to know about, I suppose. This is really bold they keep doing this. Here, getting to see a lot of cards here. Worth noting there, Creeping Dark Pit can't block this turn, so that makes Blood Gas a lethal draw potentially. Do you have a doom blade? Do, 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 do. I mean, we de we we like one hundred and ten percent won this game because I had hollowed ones on my deck post board, like not close. The hollowed the hollowed one board plan seems really sweet. I like that idea a lot. I like I like that the hollowed one board plan is like a different proactive deck as opposed to just like trying to be reactive with my linear deck. Seems like a, a neat angle of attack that I haven't seen before with Modern Dredge. I would love to play first. Um, this hand's like, this hand's like not busted, but it's fine. Also, we get to like play a Steam Vents tap, which will make our opponent think we're doing something that we're definitely not. I mean, building an amulet, should I take caution with the fact that something might get banned? I don't know. You're gonna find out, you're gonna find out Monday. The banless update happens then. Am I still playing Artifact? No, not really. Although I did watch a little bit of the Wii Play tournament that they have going on today. Saw that was happening. I might I might try one or two of the decks that uh, people played in that tournament. There wasn't there wasn't a good place to find interesting constructed deck lists for artifacts, so I got bored pretty quick. And I'm like, don't know the game enough to build decks myself. But I, I have almost every card in Artifact because it was like really cheap to get a full play set since the game is bombing. <laughs> this, this deck seems sweet, Inner. I think they're going to ban something on 21st. Nope. I think the 21st is going to say no changes in all formats. When did we win a league? You mean like 5-0? I don't remember. Probably, probably one of the Black Green Elves leagues we played somewhat recently. Yeah, when I, when I bought in, it was like, I spent like, I think I put like $200 into artifacts. I bought some of my cards when they were expensive to start. And then I bought like the second half of them when they all got cheaper. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it really is like, it's funny before, um, not, not long ago, like, you know, late summer fall last year you know christy and i were talking and we were making plans about like you know 
the the future of my channel and like how to grow it more and like i definitely thought like branching into something like artifact was going to be the natural course because like you know we've been we've been so we've been like so trained that like digital magic can't be good and then like arena is just so good in ways i just never thought possible for digital magic it's a it's a wild timeline we're living in but i can't say that i dislike it The game, the game will not be cheap, will not stay cheap if it's successful numbers. The only, the only reason Artifact is cheap now is because it's failing. Yeah, I agree, Speed. A lot of, it's been a, it's been a perfect storm of things to like make Arena really successful, both from just like it being good in terms of like an application and like, are they also playing Dredge? Are we playing a Dredge Mirror? I think we might be playing a Dredge Mirror. We are definitely playing a Dredge Mirror. Okay, interesting. Was Moto hyped when it first came out? No, not really. So it's worth noting that our build of Dredge that we have going on here explicitly does not play Narcomiba. So that's one of the cards that have been cut from this build in order to fit in what we have here. Fit in the, uh, the Street Wraiths and stuff like that. Are we worse in the mirror because of Burning Inquiry? I mean, Burning Inquiry is, like, good for both of us, right? So... What am I supposed to do here? I don't have my deck more salvage. Otherwise, I just cast the looting. I think I'm probably supposed to cast the loam and then cast the looting. Sure, nobody wants to play bad magic formats. Like, like I said, Nyan, it's a perfect storm. But like, arena is also good. I think I definitely agree with you that like the fact that standard that magic and standard are great right now helps arena but like i think it's also just kind of pointless and stupid to say that because like obviously the game's good because the formats it has are worth playing like magic online also has standard and it didn't magically become successful arena is successful because it's good software and because standard is good both of those things are contributing to it uh, uh arena is being built using unity Yes. If if Arena magically had all of the formats that Magic Online had on it, Magic Online would, would cease to exist very, very quickly. But this 25 years worth of cards not going to suddenly appear on Magic Arena. Like maybe maybe ever going to appear on Magic Arena. Hey, Deadhead Mike. Thanks for the six-month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Long time no see. An issue with my card the other day, so I had to obtain a new one. Sounds good. What man? I appreciate it. Hope you get your stuff sorted out. I definitely had to do that recently. We have one of our credit card numbers get lifted. Had to redo our auto pays everywhere. It's very annoying. And it's not, it's not even just about, like, it being hard to recreate Arena on... Are they dead? They're dead, right? I have eight cards in my hand. I have two Blood Gasts in my bin. So I I uh, put this land into play and get two Blood Gasts back. And then I can flagrate them for seven and attack them for four. Welcome to Thunderdome. They could, they could have a Dark Blast, but if they have a Dark Blast, they have to Fetch Shock for it, so they should still be dead. Charging Malaysia. 
fire. And like, this is definitely like, they just died to onboard information, right? Like they didn't have to attack with these. Like, I guess I guess I didn't have, no, I had the conflagrate in my bank because I drew a card for the turn. Can we loam first for the rebels? Nah, let's go for the exactsies. Just like send a message. So they definitely, they definitely have four ley lines in their board. So I'm pretty sure this is a matchup where we're supposed to pivot. I think this, I think this is the pivot game plan. Maybe, maybe I'm supposed to keep some prized amalgams just as three threes that I can cast and trim some Simeon Spirit Guides. What if I do, what if I do this? This seems, this seems reasonable. I have uh, two pets. They're three and a half and almost five. They're currently at daycare. I think, I think this is my game plan. Let's try it. Let's give it a go. Yeah, I agree, Jojo. I think the amount of money it would cost them to add new, those new cards to magic arena in relation to the amount of extra revenue it would generate is probably not worthwhile for them i kind of found my shuffling like i have a i have a charger here has has force of will keep exactly this hand just like also very reasonable towards uh putting a hollowed one into play Yeah, yeah, I mean, we might get a dog at some point, but definitely not until both kids are old enough to help take care of it. So probably like a year and a half or so from now. I'm like, you know, I, I work I work eight hours a day. Christy works eight hours a day, so. I don't know that I want to do daycare for a dog too. Do you have your nature's claim? I have nature's claim too. All right. Depends on how good the rest of their hand is here, but we could be in a little bit of trouble. I'm gonna play Bloodstain Mire to start, and I think I'm just gonna pass here. My plan's going to be to Cathartic Reunion next turn, and then Cycle Street Wraith, and hopefully get some Hollowed Ones into play. There's a, there's a good chance that like the rest of their hand doesn't do much here, right? Because like, they had, they had a bunch of sideboard cards in it. Flame Blade Adept, perfect. I'll just take a turn here, so this way our Reunion and our Street Wraith get to uh, add damage. Yeah, I was watching a little bit of uh, William Jensen's stream before uh, Magic Online came back up. All right, now we get to uh, now we get to have this awkward race. Like, is their dredge deck with sideboard cards better or worse than our deck without? So I'm gonna reunion. I think I'm gonna ditch this and a Bloodstain Mire. I think I want to keep these for next turn. Each of each of these represent two points of damage, and it should like pushing me more towards a Hollowed One. I'm gonna fetch a blood crypt here, I think. I don't I don't have life from the loam in my deck, and I need black black to cast street wraiths and uh what's it called? So uh, I'm actually just gonna cast the flame blade adept here and then stop. Because next turn each of these represents two damage per discard by putting another flame blade adept into play here. So I'm hoping to dodge um I'm hoping to dodge removal spells here from them. Because if I get to untap with both of these, we're going to be in a very good spot. I 
Oh, there's a there's a sneak beat imp. I guess they hit a lot of narco weavers. We could be in trouble too. Let's see how see how good their dredges are here. Please attack. Here is the day two of the government shutdown and not getting paid. What's going on, USGC? You like you like aggro decks usually, USGC. You might you might think this one's sweet. Kind of like what this deck is doing. Uh, let's do this to start. Listen, anybody, I just want to set the tone here. Anybody coming into this channel and defending the idiocy that is the current government shutdown going in on the United States, you're going to get a quick, quick ticket to timeouts, Bill. Man, so how about how about them flame blade adepts? I am I am kinda I am kinda loving what this deck is doing. This is this is I always really liked Dredge as a deck. I always really liked Dredge as a deck, but playing against sideboard cards is miserable. But like the Hollowed One Flame Blade Adept plan is is quite fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, all of all of the 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 wealthy, well off politicians that are just like acting like it's not a big deal that like day to day people have, you know, months of saved income up and just like this isn't impactful to them. It's just like it's so they're so out of touch. I really hope a lot of those people get voted out in twenty twenty. Hopefully people people get to the polls. Morgan Raven, thank you for the Twitch Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome. I won't defend idiocy, but can I get my complimentary time out anyways? Of course, the Oratog. Thank you for the eight months. I really appreciate that, folks. There's a lot of great people you could ship your Prime to every month here on Twitch. Thanks for supporting mine with it. What does this hand do? This hand's actually very reasonable. So this is like, this is like one of the fair starts from Dredge where we just like turn one looting, ditch blood gas, amalgam, turn two, have five power. It's very, very reasonable. I think election day should be a holiday. So the prop, that's actually a really loaded question because like if you make election day a holiday, certain individuals who work in certain classes are still disproportionately affected by it because certain things still have to happen or stay open even on holidays, right? Like think about things that are open on, you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving and stuff like that, New Year's Day, like and not everything is closed. While they cook cathartic reunion, sure. I wonder, I wonder if they think they have the tools to beat uh, five power on turn two. <laughs> Class, classic moto. Classic moto thought sees bug. Classic, classic moto thought sees bug. Well, we, we kind of have an election week in the United States, right? Like, you can, with early voting, early voting needs to be more accessible is a big thing, a big part of it. Making making early voting more accessible would be good. Yep. Yep, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things the U.S. can do to make, make voting more accessible, for sure. <laughs> These are my magic cards. Enjoy, opponent. Watch them have the third discard spell.
Listen, Anner, I appreciate all of what you do here, but anybody who's truly for the democracy of America and like what the United States is supposed to stand for should be all for enacting more ways to allow people to vote. There is nothing more un-American, in my opinion, than denying people or systematically making it difficult for certain types and classes of people to be able to vote. And if you don't think that happens in this country, you need to educate and inform yourself because it very much happens in this country. What this deck is doing than traditional dredge. So this deck is basically trying to go a little bit faster with um, Simeon Spirit Guides and Street Wraiths. And it's also playing Burning Inquiry so it can pivot post board into being a hollowed one deck. The things it's giving up in order to do this are copies of Narco Amoeba as well as um, like two, one or two extra copies of Dredge. All right, so looking like we're playing against Dredge here. Okay, Scavenging Ooze is annoying, but not the end of the world. I wonder, it's very possible I should have kept... It's very possible I should have kept a land last turn instead of the Creeping Chill in order to... Um... in order to uh, cast Faithless Looting this turn. I guess this works out okay, though, because, like, next turn, I'm going to get... Next turn, I'm going to get... Um, next turn, I'm going to get to uh, pay one to discard this and immediately flash it back, which is nice. This is the Jeff Hoagland channel, which includes Magic the Gathering, and talking about things that I think are important to talk about. And if you don't want to be a part of that, you're welcome to change the channel to one of the infinitely other the other places in the world. Saying, saying you're not political is a political statement. It means that you come from a place of privilege that gives you the ability to ignore things that impact other people's lives who are not so fortunate. No second green source here is fantastic. It's only it's only pol it's only just politics to you because you come from a place of privilege. To other people, it's their lives. To other people, it's being able to like, you know, pay their mortgage or like, you know, pay for food for their kids. Um, what are we what are we doing here? So we're just taking this off the table for sure, right? And I, I put another blood ghast into here, which means that I get to I get to get that back with haste since they're going. Do I wanna do I wanna overshoot here? How much do I wanna overshoot by? I think I only wanna overshoot by one. Cause I need to put I need to put three here, and I wanna play a land this turn, and I think I wanna hold creeping chill just to cast. So I'm gonna send one upstairs. And I'm gonna ditch. I'm going to ditch these. You can find deck lists of basically every color and type on uh, on my deck queue on my website right now. There's a bunch of them queued up in there. So this puts them to three. And then I have a creeping chill that's theoretically lethal next turn, in addition to these three blood gas they need a bit. So like they could like they could like untap and pulse these, but that doesn't even do it, right? Because I have like the land to play. I felt pretty good. 
This build seems sweet so far. Like I said, I've always really liked Dredge as an archetype, but just, like, I've hated the post-board games with, like, the cat and mouse that you usually have to play with, like, what are they sideboarding in? What are we sideboarding in to line up against what they're sideboarding in? So just, like, getting to straight up ignore... I, you know, I almost want to just get rid of these three cards and just, like, board in something else that, like, plays to the secondary game plan. I'm really, I'm really, I, I also am like a huge, the only thing I like almost as much as flash decks is transformational sideboards. And this deck is definitely getting to leverage a transformation. You could sideboard goblin lore. Yeah. Something like that. I do, I, I love, I love me like a practical one too, like this one really is. What do we, what do we think of this? This seems, this seems pretty reasonable. I feel like I want to go look at like Hollowed One deck list and figure out like three other Hollowed One type cards I could put in the sideboard. The problem is you want Hollowed One style cards that don't get hosed by Leyline and Rest in Peace because that's why this plan is good. This plan is good because it works while they have Graveyard Hate in play. So that's why like Phoenix and Angler aren't great. Conflagrate seems pretty okay in this matchup though. Maybe I'm supposed to do this. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to do this against the mid-range deck, like go down on mana sources. Yeah, subs get a $10 discount on, on deck submissions. So modern decks are a minimum of $25. What's a flash deck? Flash is a mechanic when put on creatures that lets you play the creature at instant speed. So a flash deck is an archetype that plays out usually completely at instant speed, at least game one. Like, what are you, what are you transforming into would be the question. This hand's really sweet. It's just like, it's just like five power on turn one again. Sign me up. How long is the queue to the standard? How long will it take to play a deck if I submit it now? Uh, it depends on how many dollars you donate. There are currently like 30 decks in the standard queue, I think. 30 or 35. Somewhere, somewhere in that range. So... And other, other people can add decks with higher dollar amounts too, so it, it can definitely vary to a great degree. Man, I might get 7 power on turn 2. I get to looting here, ditch this Bloodgast as well. It's quite fantastic. I do plan to stream a bunch extra, so I'm going to be doing 8 to 10 hours of all standard tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday. So... I will probably do, you know, like six to seven decks on each of those days. Possibly Alkalol. The last time I played a transformation transformative deck in standard. It was Naya, or it was Mardu Aggro that boarded into a control deck in um, cons. All right, so let's do this. So we need we need to find a land and four draws here. We've got Street Wraith, Street Wraith, perfect. So ideally, I want to find another Bloodgast or a or a Prized Amalgam here. And then I think I just ditch this and then I looting again here. So I'm getting I'm getting seven power into play. And if if this finds if this dredge finds more amalgams, we could potentially be very well off there as well. So they have a chance to eat this second amalgam but then that's going to choke some of their mana up so that's nice for us 
And I get I get to potentially run back the conflagrate play. Next turn of pay one, discard the conflagrate, pay two, flash it back, depending on how much they eat here. Yeah, I wonder if they kept their hand just on the back of light turn two scavenging is. They did they do see our hollowed ones and our flame blight adapts here, so they like know that we have like kind of a different plan. So if they eat to four here, I'm gonna have to dredge into the second. The second conflagrate. Or do they not have a land? That'd be good for us. I think I'm gonna dredge Stinkweed to try and hit the other conflagrate. I did not. I suppose I can. No, that doesn't work either. Yeah, I can I can attack and then run the conflagrate line. I block. This lets them this lets them eat eat one of my blood gas, but I think it's what I have to do. Spinning the wheel puts me down cards is the issue. Hopefully they block here and make this a 4-4. Okay, so this is the line they're taking. So they're gonna get to do a little bit of a little bit of mediumness for us here. So this happens. They're eating the, the blood guest. And then it looks thankfully like they kept their hand just in the back of the scavenger because they don't have a lot else going on here. So I get to take this. I get to do this with no targets. And then I get to keep one of the cards in my hand. I think I just keep Burning Inquiry because it lets me it lets me dredge three next turn, right? Loam. Loam with BI is also pretty sweet. So like how good's the rest of their hand now is the question. You have a second skews, just a goif. Deal. Alright, there's another conflagrate. If you're only playing magic with the goal of winning, you should probably get a different hobby. Other than that, I recommend just like looking at all the decks that are doing well on MTGO and uh, picking picking one of them that you think you enjoy the play patterns of. Lol McNugget, thank you for the deck submission. I'm happy to get more folk into the queue. Um, do I want to burn a conflagrate killing this? I'm not sure if I want to burn a conflagrate killing this or not. So this has three damage marked on it. So I could conflagrate discarding two lands to kill this. Alternatively, I could burning inquiry, trying to dredge into some blood, another blood gas to get my prized amalgam back. I think I want to. I think I want to bi. Let me see a lot of cards. We're hoping to find one of our other two blood gas here. And and keep a land. <laughs> God, I am not lucky enough to play this deck. Not only did we not hit a blood gas, but we discarded all of our lands. God bless. Stinkweed is an excellent blocker. The problem is the way this game's set up, we're probably not going to be in a position to like block them out of the game. Uh, 
Like, considering we just got a little bit unlucky there, and, like, our opponent had to turn two scavenging goose on the play, we're, like, pr I'm pretty impressed with how in this game we are. I think we're dead now, though, because I didn't kill the Charmagoyf, and it jumped up to a 5-6. Yeah. yeah, good game, opponent. Let's go to the third one on the play. Man, if they're just on Scavenging Ooze, do I just stay a Dredge deck? They left, like, Fatal Pushes in their deck. I'm going to trim the Flame Blade Adepts and bring the Creeping Chills back in. Long time YouTube viewer, first time on Twitch. Thank you for everything. Bump Esper Amulet Turtle. Definitely let it rip. Thank you for the biddies. I appreciate it. Hope you're having a good Wednesday wherever you're at. What's the difference between Stingweed Imp's ability and Death Touch? So Stingweed Imp's ability predates Death Touch, and it goes on the stack is the big difference. Do I want some Spirit Guides on the play is what I'm thinking about here. I'm not sure that I do. I think I just like this. Let's just do, let's just do this. Yeah, Death Touch. Death Touch just kills a creature as soon as damage happens. I would love to play first. I mean, this is uh this is a turn one hollowed one, right? Hey, Spep. Thanks for the 13 month resub. I really appreciate that. And the tier tier two resub at that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Do this to start. We wanna we wanna lead on that because it gives us the most chances to like find extra blood gas and things that I want to put in my bin. Alright, so there's no point in putting the stinkweed imp in the bin really, because I need to draw another land before I start doing anything else. It's Yoshimitu. Thank you very much for the brand new Prime Sport. And there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. Welcome. Kind of wishing this Creeping Chill was a Simeon Spirit Guide at the moment. If we draw a land next turn, we're going to be in a very good spot because we get to bring back two Blood Gas and Cathartic Reunion. Ding, ding, ding. Here's the nation for the Abzan Knight deck. Looking forward to RNA Standard. Me too. The next the next three days, we're going to do like 30 hours of Standard content between now and Sunday. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be great. I mean, we did have a lot of looks to get there, right? Like, I know I kept a one-lander, but like, we double-cycled Street Wraiths and stuff. Trigger creeping chill here. Ah, rats. This cost one. We're so close. We're so close. We're so close. We can start loaming up here to uh, hit some land drops, eventually cast this creeping chill. Cast Scavenging Ooze. How will I ever beat that one? I hate it when my 4 4s cost mana too. That that is a pretty big boy. That is a that is a pretty, pretty big, big gentleman. Alright, so how about if I attack with everything here? They block here. I'll conflagrate, discard these four, kill this, hit them, play this other hollowed one out. That seems great, right? That seems fantastic. It seems fantastic. I could not attack with this. I could not attack with this and they block here. And then I can flagrate this for three and then play the other one. 
Yeah, let's actually just attack with these. But, but but forcing the block doesn't do anything. I don't really want to. I don't really want to lose my hollowed one. Like forcing forcing the block isn't very good for me. So like now I only get into trouble if they have exactly Maelstrom Pulse next turn. If I attack with hollowed one, they're definitely blocking hollowed one. It's not close. So now I can flag this for three. I think I can actually keep, I think I can keep the, uh, the creeping chill in my hand here. Cause I just, I just need hollowed one to be free, right? And there's already a sorcery and artifact creature. There's already a sorcery creature and, and stuff in there. So let's do this. I'm, I'm excited to show this list to Matt. He's going to be all over this. Yeah, yeah, wow, that was that was sweet. All right, well, I, I don't know if I want to call it an easy 3-0, but we're three, we're 3 0. I uh, I didn't even know I was in the market for it, but I'm kind of buying what this deck is selling. I don't know if the Simeon Spirit Guides are good. I don't know if the Simeon Spirit Guides are good. I could see just playing like two lands, two goblin lures, something like that. I mean, this deck probably has an okay Tron matchup. We've got a pretty quick clock. I mean, this isn't even just a good deck. Like, Dredge and Hollowed One are both commonly accepted good decks. This is, like, an interesting mashup of good decks, right? In fact, I'm going to take a screenshot of this really quick and post it in the Discord I'm in with Matt. You've tested Manamorphose. I don't I don't know that Manamorphose really does what we want, Seth. I think if you cut Spirit Guides, you definitely need more lands. I think if I was going to cut Spirit Guides, I'd probably, like, go up two lands and, like, play two Goblin Lores. Or, like, a Goblin Lore and another Dredger. The, ju the jury's still out on, on Simeon Spirit Guide. Yeah, I, I agree. The The possible nut draws between Spirit Guide and Street Wraith is, like, huge. It's one of the reasons why I'm entertaining it. I almost, I almost feel like I want to just put like some other castable threat in the sideboard. Like we have Flame Blade, Adept, Hollowed One. Like, what's another like reasonable two or three mana, one two or three mana castable red black threat that like doesn't depend on the graveyard? Because the goal is that the the card that we'd be boarding in there would be good even in the face of Rest in Peace and Light Line. Pack Rat's pretty slow. Just just goblin guide? Yeah, that could that could be okay. This hand really doesn't do anything, right? I guess I guess if the faithless looting's good, this hand is fine. And I have I have Dakmore salvage. Maybe this is borderline keepable. I'm gonna keep this. Look at that. We broke 500 people. Thanks for dropping in for the spreadsheets today, folks. Lot left troll. Just just play bolt. Yeah, maybe bolt could be fine. Tarmogoyf's not good because Tarmogoyf is bad against um, rest in peace. Sure, sure. Let's just put four power into play on turn two. Sign me up. 
No, I want like heavy hitters. I want like heavy, heavy hitters. I don't know. I don't know if those exist. I think like Goblin Guide or Bolt are probably like reasonable. The problem is we're like never realistically triggering Vengevine, and Vengevine's kind of mediocre in the face of uh the face of what's it called? Oh god. Well, this is uh this is a matchup where we'll get to test the Hollow One plan, because this this match is this match is un unwin no, no, yes, sir. Right. You need you need Sure Wraith to enable your Hollow One starts. This this matchup's unwinnable for normal dredge, because they just bog you again and again and again. They bog you a lot. Our start's pretty reasonable here against a bog though, which is nice. The opponent's deck has both draws that are fast and draws that are disruptive. Amulet Titan is the new Bogles deck. It's, Amulet Titan is very good and it's very difficult to interact with. Amulet Titan is like is is good for a lot of the same reasons that Tron is good, which is that it's very difficult to interact with lands in an efficient way in modern. It is, it is, bas it's basically like trying for people who want to feel smart. We can kill Azusa here. That's probably the line, right? Oh my god, I just played my land before I... I'm so sloppy. I played my land pre-combat. They might they might take this trade here. Okay, not not punished. God bless. God bless there not being justice on this stream. Uh JAC is like KCI for people who want to work harder. J JAC's like Higher variance KCI. All right, kill me. Conceding to a Titan. Bounce land, bounce land Titan. Super, super dead to bounce land Titan. What are what are the odds they have one of their six copies of Primeval Titan chat? Eight copies of eight copies of Primeval Titan, sorry. They just got an Azusa. So do they not have bounce lands, they just have a bunch of lands. I'm kinda confused here. Not quite sure what we're doing. If we can steal game one, I bet we could probably win one of the two postboard games with the Hollow One game plan. Would be would be the hope. Blood Rage Brawler. Yeah, that one might be okay. Some some iterations of Hollowed One have played that before. That's a good that's a good deep dive, 12 to 12. Blood Rage Brawler, like it. Some early some early iterations of Hollowed One played that card. Is the next NRG event modern? Does anybody know? I should know that. It is, it is modern in Milwaukee. So I need, I technically, I might need a modern deck for next month. I don't know if I'm going there. I don't know if I'm playing in that event yet, but. And like having, ha playing a deck that's like has a bad amulet matchup is fine, especially at little tournaments. Cause a lot of people don't play amulet at little tournaments. 
Do I need elves? I don't have elves. That could be that could be an option too. Would not mind playing that deck again. I wouldn't mind playing something new though if we find something new that's sweet. Like I like I said, I've always liked Dredge as an archetype. I just hate the postboard games and being able to be hollowed one postboard just sounds great. No, uh, Amulet probably doesn't want to play the Instant Speed Explore card. I don't think they really have room for that site, that kind of effect. Yeah, I think so. The the people who are considered very smart in the Amulet community have like Subtle and Trinket Mage being good. And I assume they've tested a lot to know. Awesome, Aaron. I'll let you know. It, it's hard to... I also like don't commit to things in advance so like there's a chance if someone sends me a deck i just send it back without playing it too which feels bad because like february in the midwest like we get snow dumped on us at the last minute i don't, I don't drive three hours in the snow anymore past past that point in my life so our opponent either made a huge mistake and has tilted off or their cat has disconnected their router by mistake my opponent has disconnected Alrighty, ever stimulating we were talking about the NRG event. Oh, oh, I was gonna do a quick shill, but maybe they've reconnected. This is gonna be this is gonna be like the the reconnect show you you're dead. Bet on bet on the cat. Yeah, Teamer Shift might like the instant speed explore. I actually have a we have a couple of modern decks that are gonna be towards the top of the queue for next time we play modern. Because uh Magic Online is gonna get the new set here soon too. So we have Electro Dominance Living End and Teamer Escape Shift with the Instant Speed Explorer that are going to be uh the first modern decks we play when we when we play magic online again with the new cards jeff does social media no maybe oh geez i have a bunch of notifications oh look they're happy i love happy notifications I'm also still getting, I'm also still getting, I, I killed, I killed it with my, with my Gillette ad comment the other day. Look at that. Look at that. I got 200 likes, Chad. So many likes. As a millennial, I live for the likes, okay? My life, my life would be meaningless without likes on Twitter. I'm sure many of you can relate. Link to tweet. Yeah, we're probably going to get double tightened here. Is it is it worth my time to try and tie them out? I can't I can't decide because they disconnected it might be worth my time to tie them out. Electro dominance with AV in blue red phoenix that sounds sweet. I would definitely take that as the donation list. So we're super dead here. I'm going to value your time higher than winning this match. I'm just going to concede the match. Like I said, I think I think if we don't if we don't steal game 1, we're pretty unlikely to win win two postboard games. I'm like that that game's actually actually a great example of like why that matchup is so bad for Dredge because like they didn't even they didn't even bog us. They didn't even bog us in the in the first game, right? They uh they didn't have, they're not going to have to pay for pack. They're going to kill us that turn. They're going to put two Titans into play and kill us. They deal, they deal 20. Or, or one Titan with double Slayer Stronghold. We're dead. Um, so. The the reasons why Dredge is a bad match between Samuel and Titan is you can get bogged repeatedly on the interactive access. And the opponent can also just like fast Titan and kill you. Like we had happen there. Uh, yeah, this, this hand's great, actually. Like, really good. Uh, this hand ideally wants to hit 
a second land in the first Faithless Looting, but we're going to do stuff and things with this one for sure here. That is a phenomenal draw as well. So hoping to hit a land here in these two draws. If we had a land in these two cards, yeah, that's fantastic. So now, now I'm going to get to double looting next turn and then like cathartic and just dredge through all these cards. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if we're fast enough here. This is a good, this is a good start for the opponent. We do get to dredge 10 cards here, which is good for us. So I get 10 looks at a Conflagrate. So ideally looking to hit Conflagrate in these 10 cards. Did not hit a Conflagrate in those five. You'll note here that I dredge during my opponent's second main phase. And the reason why I do this is because, oh, actually there's no reason to do it during the second main phase in this deck. I'm used to normal dredge that is Narcomy Buzz. Because there's not Narcomy Buzz in this build, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to dredge there. Or there's no difference between dredging there and dredging at the end step. All right, I have unfortunately missed on. I've unfortunately missed on finding a cathartic reunion or a good flagrate. So now there's only one loam left in my bin. Well, there's a loam plus a salvage. So I have to decide here. I. I need, I could shock this in and cathartic dredging these two plus a life from the loom. So that puts more cards in my bin this turn. The flip side of that though, is because there's not Narcomoebas in this build. If I use the cathartic reunion in this way, I can't get prized amalgams into play this turn. Whereas if I faithless looting and only dredge five, I could dredge into, I could dredge into prized amalgams, which means when this blood gas comes into play, I get to get that going. I think I want a Cathartic Reunion here and just get through more of my deck because of the Creeping Chills that were mentioned. All right, only one chill in our top 40, 35 cards here. That's fine. We only hit one Amalgam in there too. We, we didn't hit any more blood gas either. It's a little bit rough. So I definitely need to conflagrate this turn. Did I hit a chill earlier? Nope, nope, did not. So I'm going to dredge Dakmore Salvage here because I want to get another land into play this turn. So I'm going to go ahead and Conflagrate dealing two, two, two. Discarding these six cards that aren't the land. And this way, next turn, I can dredge life from the loam and still cast another Conflagrate if I want to. Losing this race a little bit, though. Maybe I'm just supposed to go big next turn and dredge Stinkweed Imp and then flashback Faithless Looting, dredge Stinkweed Imp again. Because if I don't if I don't hit Creeping Chills, I'm dead on board, right? Yeah, I'm probably supposed to go big and find my Creeping Chills. There's the last chill. Their lifelink keeping them alive. So that puts me to 14. This puts them to three. And then next turn, I get to dredge a loam, cast a loam, bring back blood gas, and flashback conflagrate for, for a little bit of damage. 
That's brutal. I'm not dead, but this left them lifelink for a lot. I think we're going to come up short here now. Oh wow, I don't e I don't even have my my fourth blood gas, huh? I'm So if I had my fourth blood gas, would I have lethal? I don't think so. I think the lack of narcomiba in this deck is probably wrong. I like the transformational sideboard, but if we had Narco Bebas in our deck this game, we definitely would have won. Oh, just casting Imp. No, casting casting Imp doesn't do it because my opponent has play, has an instant speed way to move the plating. So if I if I cast if I cast Imp, they'd attack with Ornithopter plus this, and then equip whichever one I didn't block. I, I'm just dead. Well, maybe maybe they don't have enough artifacts if I kill two other things. They actually just shouldn't block here, right? Yeah, yeah, the no no blocks there is correct. Because if they block, I could deal one here, deal two here, and then maybe not die inside of combat. Yeah. Opponent played that really well. We were one one point of damage short. So if I would have if I would have hit my fourth blood ghast in my top 55 cards, I would have forced them to block there, and then I could have lived another turn and probably won the game. But I think ultimately overall my takeaway from this game was that I'm pretty, pretty confident I want Narcomibas in my deck. Our start, our start was very good there, and it just like wasn't good enough because we didn't have access to Narcomiba. Top fifty-five, yeah. Top, there were only there are only three blood gas that are top fifty-five cards. Yeah, Narcos for guides, maybe. So that you definitely need more lands, at least one more, I think, if you cut the spirit guides, maybe even two. So you need to shift around some of the details. Maybe you don't play the full four ball on the on the creeping chill. It was it was really close and like even without the narcomy blows, we were like one blood gassed off from being able to kill them there, right? This league was good. I'd been getting a little burnt out playing terrible decks in modern and just getting beat up and getting to like sit down and like play a deck that's actually good is refreshing. We've played we've played a lot of stinkers. Do I want to go on the hollowed one game plan here? I think I don't, right? I think I just want to stay the course. They have some Graft Diggers Cage post sideboard, but like their deck just like blocks hollowed ones and flame blade adapts pretty consistently. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna click submit. I think Blue Red Wizards deck is still a deck. It's tier two, like it's always been. I don't know that's amazing. We're actually gonna be playing. Uh, we're actually going to be playing some... So, uh, some other people have been putting up results with Blue Red Wizards, playing three Fairy Conclaves and three Mutavolts in a build that seems kind of sweet. Hey, Draxer, thanks for the brand new Prime support. Welcome, welcome. I appreciate that. This hand has a lot of looks to find Dredger, so I'm going to keep it. Opponent snapped off their seven, so that doesn't bode well for me. It's probably going to be like Cage on turn one, and I'm just going to weep silently over here. And by silently, I mean very loudly and concede. Two sub babies, almost time for a horsey. Susamato, thanks for the 18 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. What if you played Shadow in the sideboard? 
Now we're cooking with gas. That that actually sounds really hot. And you don't even have to get rid of all the chills to play Shadow. Because we board out Creeping Chill in this deck when we board in the Hollowed One game plan. That actually sounds really sweet. Because we have a lot of fetches and shocks, right? And we could arguably even play like more fetches and shocks if we wanted to. I I I love that idea. I definitely miss, missed it, Jensen. Yeah, we have we're playing Street Wraiths already. Why don't you take all the happiness you feel right now and I want you to put it under a mattress and keep it for a safe and rainy day or for when you play Esper Gorios, whichever comes first. <laughs> What's going on, Burgle? Way to, way to rain on my parade, Burgle. Way to, why you have to make me feel bad is only game. Why you... Yeah. Why you gotta be a downer? Yeah, well, I wonder what's in their hand that they kept it. So I'm doing this all pre cut. Well, that's a lot. There's there's our amalgams. Can we time out Burgle for being too real? All right, so I get to burning inquiry here. Oh, I'm out of dredgers, aren't I? That's really unfortunate. They have like a surgical extraction or something here. Nope. Maybe you think he has anger of the gods? I mean, if they don't cast Anger of the Gods here, we're in a really good spot. Negative. Burgle's not negative. Burgle's realistic. Uh, the Steam Vents is so you can cast Prized Amalgam in post-board games. Which may or may not be necessary. Pika fight, please stop playing with the bot. Thank you. Okay. Is there really not a conflagrate in my bin? What a tilt. There we go. There we go. I was I was about to be a little upset that there wasn't a conflagrate in my bin. They conceded to the conflagrate. I, I have no idea what they kept. They kept seven very quickly. <sighs> Do I want a couple of these in the draw? I think my dredge plan is better than my hollowed one plan here, but a couple of these in the draw is probably fine since I have them. I mean, I want all the things, j Robes. I, I don't just want some of them. I want all of them, okay? Just, I need you to understand my desire. Am I going to add anything cool to the workroom? So, we actually put up... We got some slight... These foam pads to, like, absorb some of the sound on the walls that are in, like a pattern here in front of me into the sides and we're ordering some more of those to put up in the back so there's going to be a pattern of those behind me at some point do i keep this i think this hand's probably fine I think this hand's probably fine <laughs> 
Is there is there a noticeable difference? I didn't I didn't want to say anything because in my in my experience if you tell people there's been a change in audio, people will always tell you yes, even when there hasn't been a change in audio. All right, so what am I binning here? It's actually it's actually kind of interesting. So like, I could just put, I could just put like Amalgam Bloodgast in the bin here and like plan to get five power into play next turn. I definitely hear still hear a slight reverb when I'm talking, so. Definitely need more. So there's still a little twang. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's actually that much different than before. Amalgam plus Imp. Yeah, that's probably right. It could just be two imps too. I don't know. I don't know that I'm a huge fan of splitting the difference here. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I, so honestly, I didn't. I didn't think it sounded. I think it's. It definitely sounded different than the room at the old house. But I didn't really think it even sounded bad before I changed it. Before I changed anything. They don't have another land. It's good for me. Wow, their their hand was really bad. Did they mulligan? And they kept their hand again. Weird. Well, I missed on I missed on hitting another dredger. So that feels incredibly bad. I did hit a third land here at least though. So next turn I can Faithless Looting. Yeah, I think I think my initial Faithless Looting discard was wrong. I think I should have discarded double double imp or or blood gas price to Malcolm. Probably double imp. We discarded two cranial platings out of their hand, so that's kind of funny. So I played the land before I inquiried because I didn't want to run the risk of I didn't want to run the risk of uh I didn't want to run the risk of uh discarding my only second land. I could start casting imps, that's true. Maybe that ends up being better. Am I dead next turn? Might be dead next turn. I get to put a bunch of power into play here though. I'm gonna get six here and these drag three more along with it next turn. If I hit, I don't have a, I don't have a conflagrate yet. The new set releases tomorrow. I do have two more creeping chills in my deck here too. And again, like just Imagining the difference if we had Narcomibas to dredge to as extra blockers here is like night and day. I believe it releases on Moto tomorrow as well. How long has this league been? Uh, about an hour 45. Magic, Moto leagues take a long time. Which is, which is another reason why Arena Con- Which is another reason why I made the cost of modern decks more expensive than Magic Arena decks. Because Moto decks hold me captive sometimes for up to two hours. Which means I get to do less of them in a day. In addition to that, that being less popular as a format. I mean, normal dredge plays three con flags. And there's, there's a reason for that.
Am I dead? Probably dead. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yep, we are exactly dead. Good games. Yeah, and again, again, I feel like I feel like we we lost that entire match. Like games games one and three that we that we lost here, we lost because we didn't have Marco Meep in our deck. So we ran the 3-0 start into the 3-2 finish, just like modern things. I like what this deck was doing though. Like I said, I've always been a fan of Dredge as an archetype, but I've hated the post the post board like bob and weave with like trying to guesstimate where their deck is going and like hoping we draw answer slam to what they're doing so like having this flame blade adept hollowed one plan where like we just turn into a different proactive plan that doesn't care about ley line doesn't care about rip is really awesome the zeta sphere thank you very much for the brand new prime support welcome welcome thanks for keeping me employed this month with that my takeaways from decisions in the main deck were that um, I really wasn't a huge fan of not having Narc Amoeba, like we mentioned in that in that last one. And Simeon Spirit Guide's a little bit middling. I think if I were to try this again, I would probably turn a Creeping Chill into a land and go down to just three of these, and then turn the Simeon Spirit Guides into Narc Amoebas and see how that plays. We also talked about having other threats for the sideboard instead of having the small selection of answers. And somebody brought up Death Shadow, which actually sounds pretty sweet because our deck plays a bunch of fetches and shocks anyways. And we have a bunch of street race and we usually board out the creeping chills when we board in the, the other sideboard plan. So if we like boarded in just like 11 other creatures that don't care about the graveyard, that could be really awesome. So like if you were doing that, like what are your, what are your, what are your, your cuts? You'd cut like creeping chills, and narco amoebas and like two loams and two con flags probably or something like that no you don't want gurmag angler pike because that's a card that gets hosed by rest in peace and ley line all of the cards that we are all of the cards that we are playing in the sideboard that you're boarding in for the transformational plan need to not get hosed by ley line and rip 